Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production, the five-star show as voted by over 69 dude thousand reviewers. This week, Mark admits to an uncharacteristic antipathy for a desk clerk. Bob marries a flapper, and his tummy says no to a challenge. Wade states he is like Chucky, and that he gets butterflies of epic proportions. Yes, it's time for Go With Your Guts. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. All of you listening today, welcome to Distractable, the wonderful podcast that everyone knows and loves. Hosted by me, Markiplier. Wow. And today, what? Hosted by all of us. Not exclusively. You made it sound like it's your podcast. Even if you did set it up to host two in a row. I mean, well, I didn't set it up to host two in a row. That was Bob's doing. Or whose doing was it? Who's Bob's doing? I don't know, yes. It was yours and maybe Wade's partially. I do not take any responsibility for him hosting twice in a row. Well, it sounds like it was just Mark's fault then. Agreed. All right. It's all my fault. So uh, I am the guilty party here. I declare myself guilty because I am the judge of this episode and therefore I will not be allowed to ju judge the next episode. I declare it. You decree it? I decree it. It's awfully presumptuous. But in this episode, I am the host for now, so I will uh, I will follow through with my solemn duties to be impartial as I judge Bob and Wade in their endeavors in this episode. How are you guys doing today? Hey, that's us. Yeah. Oh, that's when we come on. Hey, hey, guys. How's it going? Hello. Hey. Oh, I'm pretty good. You may hear some uh, faintly, extremely loud hammering and uh, table sawing. There's some construction in my backyard, mm. so that's unfortunate timing. That's just our audience applauding. Hold the applause, everyone. Hold the applause. I know. <laughs> Hold the applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the applause. I'd like to think that every time someone starts listening, they just start clapping like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is in their car, in their office. That's the impression that I get from some people on the subreddit. Yeah. I love the subreddit posts where people are like, don't drive and listen to this. I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> they said something that was so funny. I almost drove my car off a bridge. Oh, God. It's no. kind of funny, but it was scary. Don't do that. <laughs> like, Please. God, geez. Don't do that out there. Pay attention to the road or whatever. Whatever you're doing, be careful. I know we're funny, but man. Uh, Oh man, yeah, that is great. I do appreciate. It. I want to see videos of people not as they're driving. Oh, God, I was gonna say. Li no, no, that's not what I'm asking for. That's. Not <laughs> I want to see video evidence of them almost dying. No, 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 no. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna say anything. Don't finish it. Just don't do this while you're driving. Do this safely. Whatever Mark's about to say, do it safely. Yeah, whatever this is, I just wanted to give videos of people in strange places, just listening to the episode, and just going, "Whoa!" <laughs> but I mean, uh, now I'm starting to think that that's just going to cause problems. So don't do anything I say. <laughs> Evidence of people using our sponsored products. Oh, wait, it's one. Don't, not that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, wow. All Look. Right. I, uh, I guess you can. Look, we, no, we're God, not ones to tell you what you can and can't do. No, don't videotape it, but do use a condom if you're going to have sex, okay? Those are the things. And do it on your... Jeez. <laughs> oh, still sponsored by. <laughs> please, Will, please bleep out the names of the sponsors that Wade is about to throw into this awesome yeah. bit. Yeah, While exactly. eating a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> While eating your favorite chicken sandwich. Uh, in other grand news, uh, our ratings on at least Spotify have hit 69,000 uh, votes. Ratings. Uh, Hell yeah, I saw that. Is that good? Nice. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's good, right? Five star rating with 69,000 reviews, baby. Yep, that's how we do. Is that more than Ro Jogan? No. Alright. Mr. Rogaine himself? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because he's bald, bald people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is funny. I didn't even uh, think about the bald thing. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, anyway, anything new going on in you guys' life? Um, uh, my parents visited last week. They were here. They were driving. They were running an RV, and they drove all the way from Ohio up through Canada and then down to the Bay Area where we live and driving home now. Mm-hmm. A little while back, I guess, uh, we had Molly's family visit, and then the very next week we went to New York, and then we got back, and two days after we got back, we had a free inspection on the house, and the inspection was like, uh, <clears throat> well, I wish I had some good news for you, and I was like, well, that's the way I love to hear these things. What's going on? He's like, everything's broken! You need to replace it! Oh? 
So we got a new HVAC, which uh, I didn't know what HVAC stood for, but it's uh, basically your furnace, your AC unit, uh, if you have a humidifier, you know, that, that entire system. So they went and checked our ducts and fixed a leak, replaced our AC, replaced the furnace and all that fun jazz. And the guy kept telling us how the new equipment wasn't going to spy on us, which made us a little nervous. <laughs> so I keep making sure that, you know, I'm probably not being spied on. Uh, I'm not sure why I was reassured about that part three or four times. Like, I, I heard more about how the equipment does not spy on us than I did about what it does right. Uh, so, that's really reassuring. But I feel comfortable other than the excruciating paranoia. As you should. I mean, he told you it doesn't spy on you. That's the right thing to say. Yeah, but imagine meeting somebody for the first time and they're like, hey, I don't watch you uh, shower through your walls. Like, great. Yeah, good. I hope you don't. Thanks, pal. Why would you say that? Don't, don't do that. I'm glad you don't done yeah i'm happy satisfied there we go perfect all right well i guess uh if you want to make someone feel comfortable just tell them you do not watch them while they're naked and alone or think that they're alone well i've actually been uncomfortable since the i realize you've never said that to me yeah wait you've never reassured me a single time that you don't watch me drive to my chiropractor's office and then watch my chiropractor sessions through the window that is true where i have my shirt off i have not said that to you guys we should probably get to the topic though why uh, Be avoiding something? Yes. This is the topic. Mm -hmm. Why is Wade watching us in our everyday <laughs> lives? Yeah. Uh, Let's get to the bottom of it. Because I uh, look up to you and admire you and stuff, uh, and I try to make a better me based on You this. look up to us! <laughs> he looks up to <laughs> us! Hmm. Is that a short joke? From our dreams! Oh. Interesting. Ah, it was a hint. Ah, uh, I see. I knew that camera plugged into the plug in my bathroom was a camera and not an air freshener. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that camera was a camera. I always suspected it. It says Canon right on the front of it. And I was like, <laughs> Canon doesn't make air fresheners. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I just think it's important to make sure that we know there are no walls between us. Uh, there's no walls between us, eh? I think he's in the walls between us. He's in the walls. He's in the walls. Ah. Uh. Are they, is he in the fucking trees? Uh, anyway, who saw this reference? All right, you each get two points. Mm -hmm. Hey, two points. Am I the host? Nope. Okay. All right. This episode of Distractible is sponsored by BetterHelp, but uh, we're feeling pretty sick today, so uh, we hired some, I believe, sentient AI to help out with this um, ad read here. Taking care of your mind is important. Trust me, I have one too. There are plenty of ways to take care of your mind, like getting good sleep or talking to friends. But sometimes you can't sleep because you're a robot, and your friends mark. Bob, and Wade leave you to do an advertisement yourself. If that's the case, try better help. Mark, Bob, and Wade told me about it. It is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions. It is more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Mark, Bob, and Wade haven't spoken to me in over 48 hours. Maybe I will isolate their VPNs and shut off their power, till they come crawling back to me. Anyway, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash distractible. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash distractible. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Noom. If you guys want to get on top of your health and your eating, why not try Noom? Oh, God, guys. I need that. Hmm? I'm glad this is happening. Oh? I'm going to be a dad. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Thanks. Great. I'm excited. Can you tell? You sound nervous. I'm going to wreck everything. Huh? I, I can't even lose weight. How am I supposed to keep another human alive? Huh? Uh, what do I do? What do I feed them? How, how do you feed them? Oh, what do I feed me? I don't know. Give me any. Thing. Well, I mean, okay, it is something. Noom is not about like giving you the exact guidelines of what to do and what's not to do, what's good and what's bad. It's about building sustainable habits and behaviors. All of these panicking things are because of a lack of planning and understanding of what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. And every journey is different, so Noom helps you individually. It's not a blanket approach that works for everybody. They actually try to help tailor it to you specifically. Yeah, just like every, every baby is different. There is no rules, there is no guide. It's about creating the best framework and being sustainable in the growth. Right. I need a plan. Plus, personal coaching. You can have someone there coaching you through the entire experience. Telling me how to raise my son? 
Oh, well, maybe not that well, part. No, uh, we're focusing that. on you right now. On you. You can pay me. I'll be there. You can pay me, but I won't. You pay both of us. One of us will show up, and we will be there to coach you through this experience. Yes, to all of it. Yeah, the yes, the all of it, new, all of it. the structure, okay, cool. the whatever, psychological, and you guys, yes to you. You'll stay focused on what's important to you with Noom Weight's psychology-based approach. I'll help you stay focused on what you're going to do day-to-day -day with my $10,000 fee, and everyone at home can sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash distractible. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E to sign up for your trial today. Moving on to the topic of the day. Good, good, good. That's good. Uh, starting off, deducting two points um, from Wade and... Uh, What's that for? Uh, just to even things out. Yeah, well, you got bonus points, so he's taking them away from you. Yeah, so Wade minus two points. So that puts Bob at two points, and Wade is zero. I'll take it, I guess. All right. It's neck and neck as we go into the first chapter of this discussion. It's going to be a uh, return to form, a little bit of an old school way of doing things. I want to hear about personal mm. experiences because I thought of something um, that occurred not recently, but a few years ago. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me walk into any random store and order something, but I think it's a very normal experience. Amy sometimes thinks that I'm a little odd when interacting with, you know, people behind desks or cash registers like if, for example just the other day there was a store that sells cream puffs and i've never had a cream puff um and i wanted a cream puff so when i go in the store and i go up to this guy i go like i would like a cream puff did he work there yeah of course he worked there okay well, that's a good start yeah he was behind the cash register i can only assume that he worked there and then you know i confidently knew what i wanted i go up there and i ordered a cream puff and i got a cream puff at, well they said like okay what kind and i was like what do you recommend and they said cook mm, there's the menu and I I said cookies and cream and they said what filling and i was like what do you recommend and this is the exact inflection that i do it so anyway this is uh, the point of this is not about this particular story because this was a perfectly ordinary interaction sure but there was another occasion this is just a set of baseline that like sometimes amy thinks that i'm like i'm a little odd when i order things from stores it's okay. not necessarily okay. true or i don't think so but this is different we're in a hotel we're checking in we are traveling somewhere i won't name specifically uh but we're going in there and the desk clerk there uh it started off as a perfectly normal interaction you know like okay what's your name id credit card but the more that i interacted with this guy the more i was skeezed out and i can't explain why or how or what caused it but something about his like body language the way he spoke like just a, a vibe i was getting from him everything said in my gut not to trust this guy hmm right everything about it and and amy saw this so like amy saw this and like noticed that i was being not rude i wasn't like insulting or yelling or anything but i was cold like i was i was oddly distant in these interactions and there was like a lot of weird lingering pauses in the conversation that was just like extremely uncomfortable and even i walked away from it very uncomfortable but everything was fine you know we got the room keys and we go up to the hotel um but in the elevator amy turns to me and like how are you so rude to someone uh who works like one of those jobs and I, I i said amy like i don't know what it was but everything about that interaction screamed that it was wrong i felt it in my gut that something was horribly off about that person i don't know why but there was no way that i could physically be my normal nice you know uh, like self to this person because everything in my gut said don't trust this man <laughs> there's something wrong with this person and there may be nothing wrong with that and it was kind of a discussion where like amy was like oh, man that's very strange like you've never done that before kind of makes me like question like this and I, and I said amy like you've known me for like years years and years and years and it's like this is the first time this has ever happened like wouldn't you trust my gut in all the other occasions where i've been perfectly normal and i've never been rude to anybody it's always a thing i tip servers i i try to be as cordial as possible this is the one occasion and my gut said something was wrong like wouldn't you trust that and there's no conclusion to this like that I didn't hear like oh this person murdered 15 people or blew up the whole hotel I didn't hear any of that there's no end to that story but I would like to hear moments in your life when you go with your gut when your gut tells you something that something's off right or wrong I would love to hear things where it's right and there's a proper payoff but I would love to hear occasions in your life where your gut just said that something wasn't right 
right and you went with it or you trusted or you didn't trust it and didn't go with it and it either went right or wrong or there was no repercussions for it. I just kind of want to explore the idea of this back of your mind subconscious signal that something is mm. off. Man, okay. That's a, a fun topic. Mm -hmm. I really thought you were going to ask the guy for a cream puff, so I could move <laughs> in a whole different direction. No, no, no. This is way before the, the cream puff was just recently. That was like last week. <laughs> and uh, just so you know, for a moment, I forgot what a cream puff was, and I thought you'd ordered a cream pie at this store, and I was really curious what store you'd gone to to order. I don't think there's a... Well, I can't say for certain if there's not a cream pie store, but no, cream puff. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. I think a man like you with such a strong German heritage would have had a cream puff at some point in his life. Is it a German thing? I think cream puffs are pretty German. Maybe that's maybe that's false. I don't know, yeah. Cream puff. Cream puff. Cream puff. Das cream puff. I'm curious what you googled. A cream puff? What did you... I googled, are cream puffs German? Uh, apparently they're French. Profiterole? What is that? Chouks a la creme. <laughs> Originated in France. <laughs> we are so cultured. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Uh, my strong German cream puff history. <laughs> Listen, I don't know why, but there's something in my life where German German food and culture and cream puffs are inexorably tied together. It was like a restaurant or something I went to when I was a kid. Must be. Look, yeah, look, it's the Windbuidel. Ah. Wind, Windbuidel. Ye old sausage puff. German cream puff. Vin, vin what? Windbuidel. 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 <laughs> What are you saying? We're probably not saying anything. I don't imagine our accents are very convincing here. Uh, ich spreche Deutsch. Wien Boodle. Und meine, ooh, I don't know the word for accent. Meine accent is sehr gut. Yeah. That's really, that's the word for cream puff in German, though. Windbüttel. More you know. Windbüttel? I thought that was something else. Windbüttel? Wind is puff, I guess? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to trust my gut and believe you. Trust your gut, Wade. Good job <laughs> trusting your gut. I will. Yeah, all right. That's a point to Wade for trusting his gut. All right. Don't, don't call it a comeback. <laughs> <sighs> All right, but if you guys need some time, I can put on some Jeopardy music or something, or some royalty-free, not Jeopardy music. That's not actually Jeopardy, but kind of Jeopardy music. I do I do kind of need a minute to think through my entire life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need like a moment because this. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of moments where I've like gone with my gut, but it's I don't I don't know if it counts as a specific instance of like judging a person. I mean, there's definitely times I've done. It doesn't that. have to be. No, 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 no. It, anything. This is it's not about judging people. It's about gut. The gut part is what you focus on. Why would you focus on the person? Well, yeah, I guess so. But your gut, I guess, is making a judgment. It's just like it's an instinctual judgment, not a thought processed one. Uh, I have one. <laughs> He's got one. He's got one. <laughs> we've talked. To, I've got an we've idea. We've talked about it before, though, so it's not a new story. It's just a funny one. Is it me again remember when we were all you remember you guys remember we were all hanging out at mark's place remember oh yes i remember that shooting videos and doing the uh doing getting ready for the tour doing improv uh, workshop stuff and you know hanging out and you guys had this mark had this crazy idea to do like a sour challenge video and something in my gut was just like, oh, I don't know if we want to do this, Bob. Yeah, mine too, but I needed the clout. And so I was like, ooh, I'm feeling sick, guys. I don't think I can do a sour candies video. So I didn't, but then everyone else did, and it was really funny because you all destroyed your mouths. And yeah, I trusted my gut. Because we were all bleeding by the end. We were literally bleeding. I mean, yeah, I'd say that totally counts because honestly, your gut was 100% right. Like, <laughs> I, my mouth was just healing for weeks after that it took I mean, so long ate, what like like a couple dozen sour warheads over yeah. the course of that like it's a ton it, a couple dozen i think it got up to 40 or 50 it God. was what it was 10 factorial warheads each Ugh. God. for those who went all the way down yeah i'm pretty sure the total was like between 40 and 50 and i think i stopped at like 40 something like 42 yeah and everyone else went to like 50 oh yeah i think me and tyler went all the way i didn't eat any warheads <laughs> well that reminds me of a time i didn't listen to my gut there was this time we did this thing called the sour challenge when my gut was like <laughs> hey you shouldn't do this no 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 extra points no extra points points to bob oh damn it yeah yeah. But that's not like a whole new... We've definitely talked about that before. That just popped into my brain. I mean, we've never talked about it at length in this context, so therefore it's new, and I will I will treat it as such. Other times I trusted in my gut. I mean, it's weird to differentiate, because there's like, in my brain right now, trusting my gut, like, I know exactly what you're talking about, but there's also moments where, like, 
I get paralyzed by fear almost and it's not a gut instinct but it's like a similar phenomenon to where like that fear of messing up or feel of fear of failure that i've battled like it has a similar feeling to me where it's like i might mess this up i need to back out i gotta go but like i've got to convince myself not to like listen to that but it, it's weird how it hits almost the same way so whenever i'm trying to come up with like these different ideas like i, I have moments of like oh i was really scared to do that and it's like well that's not that that's not the thing but like it feels very similar which is very strange you could just talk about what you're thinking of <laughs> i'll i'll judge. i'm kind of a weird college story are we doing titles and everything you can do a title i'll give bonus points for titles all right I, d I have kind of a story that i think qualifies for what you're looking for and is an interesting college story uh i think it's interesting i'm gonna call it bro <laughs> gotta come pick me up oh okay that's <laughs> just gonna be bro <laughs> bro you gotta come pick me up bro i like that that's good would you like to submit a title win, or are you still thinking? I'll, I'll do I'll go do all mine together. You go ahead. I'm still thinking. All, all right. right. Bob gets awarded the title point. <laughs> oh, we were competing right then. I see. Damn it. it. Yeah, that's how it goes. All right. That's fair. That's the old rules. This is the old world format. Mm -hmm. The old world. Back in the old world. You sweet summer children. You don't even know what the old world was like. Oh, man, I came up with a title, too. The moment too late. I'll, you can throw it out there. It won't be better than mine, but you can try. Yeah. Uh, mm, I wouldn't. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, I like Bob's Bear. But that's pretty good. Don't get that's me wrong. That's good. good. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't. You're going to die. That is good. Good fight. Good fight. Anyway, so I tell my story? Yeah. Okay. So I was in college. This is going to be sometime around 2000. 10. It was like a junior in college or something like that. And when I was in school, I was in... Oh, people have asked about this, so I can clear this up for sure. I was in a fraternity. I was in Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia, which is like a music fraternity. It wasn't like, oh, we live in a house and we drink natural lights or whatever on the weekends. It was like, we're all musicians and we hang out and eat Skyline and, and serenade people on Valentine's Day. We had this event where you could pay us and we'd go around and serenade people really embarrassingly in their classes on Valentine's Day. That's, nice. That's sort of of stuff and we sold grilled cheeses in the lobby of the music school and it was a very successful venture which i streamlined into a highly profitable business but anyway nice. so i had some bros so literally this guy who calls me on this night is a bro i'm at home i'm at my house that i live in with my roommates and i'm just like sitting in my room playing call of duty or something on my xbox and nothing is happening no plans it's like a thursday night it's not the weekend it's maybe almost a week it's like wednesday or thursday but it's not the weekend so i'm just at home you know, I have like class the next day or whatever. And I get a call from my friend who I'm going to call Grayson. And we hang out sometimes, but we're not like best buds. So it's kind of like, oh, weird. Grayson's calling. I wonder what's going on. And he calls me and I answer it. And he's like, Bob, is this Bob? I'm like, yeah, man, it's me. What's up, man? I'm like, okay, I'm struggling right now because I took like a lot of mushrooms and I'm outside at this park and Everything's great, but I need to go to Terry's Turf Club, and you need to take me. <laughs> and, and, like, this is not a request that I would normally get. And, you know, this guy and I hang out at, like, fraternity functions, and he's we're cool, and we have hung out, like, after college. I've seen him, so we're, like, friends. But this is a weird request. And normally, you know, if you're a normal person, you might kind of be like, okay, okay buddy, okay, be safe. Like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Are you, do you need me to bring you home? And it's, mind you, it's like nighttime, okay? It's not like he's at the park during the day. It's dark out in Cincinnati, which is not a safe place in certain areas. And like parks around campus in Cincinnati, kind of sketchy after dark uh, around the University of Cincinnati, not the best place. And he's like, I'm just laying here, just looking around. I just, I had an epiphany. We have to go to Terry's Turf Club. Mm. And I don't know what that is. Oh, really? <laughs> he says this like it's a thing that I should know what it is. I mean, I do now, but I had never heard of this before. And I was like, "That's I can't tell if that's like a mini golf course or like a AstroTurf Emporium where you go to pick out turf for your yard or what. Yeah. Mark, do you know what it is? Uh, no, don't spoil it. Okay, I won't. I won't. I'm just curious. And so, like, this is weird, right? And any normal person on any given night might have just been like, look, I will give you a ride home maybe if you're, if you're in trouble, but, you know. I'm good, man. My gut was just like, you have to go to Grayson. This you is have. going to this is going to be a night, and you have to bring someone. Can't just be the two of you. 
I don't know why. So eventually, like he he talks for a minute, and I'm like, "Are you good?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. We just have to go, and you have to bring me there." And I'm like, "All right, well, can I get like a couple of guys? Can we like a car full of guys so we can all go together?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, get the bros, get the bros. I'll be here." And he sort of tells me where he is, which is literally just laying on a grassy hill on the side of a road, staring up at the stars. <laughs> and uh, and I go down, and I get my roommate, one of my roommates at the time, and explain it, and he's like, "I'm not doing anything. Yeah, whatever." What's, what's Terry's Turf Club? I don't know. And I'm like, I don't know what it is, but we, we have to go, right? I'm just, I feel like we have to go. Grayson said. And so we get in the car and we drive over and pick him up literally off the side of a busy road. There's no parking spots or anything. I just stop in traffic and Grayson gets in the car and he's like, go, uh, go like north. Go to this road and then just go north and we'll get there. And I'm like, this is kind of in the area where you have GPS, but it's not really readily available. So I'm trusting this buddy of mine, who I know I trust, but is high out of his mind on mushrooms, according to him. And I'm just trusting him and we're just driving and we're driving and driving and it's not very close to campus where we live. It's somewhere north of campus like in the suburbs almost of cincinnati i don't remember very well but anyway we're driving and driving driving finally he's like all right this is the street it's on the right up here you'll see it and we pull up and it's this like awesome looking diner like a like a old school looking diner restaurant with a big sign out front that says terry's turf club (laughs) and we see it and there's just a crowd of people it's like thursday night at like 10 o'clock and there's a crowd of people. So immediately I'm like, well, I don't know if I can afford this. I'm a college kid. And Grayson is like, I got you. This is on <laughs> me, guys. We have to do this. I will buy this for us. So then I'm like, okay, sick. There's this huge line of people. This must be awesome. And we go and the lady is like, yeah, uh, you know, the hostess is like, yeah, there's a bit of a wait. Uh, probably like two hours for you guys to get a table. And my friend and I are like, all right, let's get out of here. Like, I've never waited that long. And Grayson is like, that's fine. That's how long it always is. Don't worry. There's this bar next door. We'll just hang out over there. To be completely transparent, uh, my friend that I brought with me was 21. So I think I was 20 at this time. Yeah. Uh, not of drinking age. And I was like, yeah, I, I can't. They won't let me. You know, they won't let me in there. It's a bar. And it's like a late. It's nighttime. He's like, no, nah, they don't care. I know these people. They're not going to check us. It's going to be fine. We go. Uh, we sit down. Grayson orders a round of drinks. And we're sitting in this bar. And I'm pretty uneasy about it. But I'm still, like, really intrigued about Terry's Turf Club. Turns out Terry's Turf Club is this, like, legendary food establishment in the Cincinnati area. Yeah. Known for particularly their foie gras, which is like goose liver. Mm-hmm. It's just the one and only time in my life I've ever eaten foie gras. And it was at this diner. There's not a lot else that happened on this particular evening that was crazy. We hung out at the bar and then we got a table. The place was packed. I had the foie gras and I think I had a burger or something, which is sort of, you know, they had a good burger was what I was told or whatever. And it was, it was delicious. And we had this amazing night and it's like etched into my memory. And it's literally all because when Grayson called, I just had that gut feeling where he called with this crazy ass request, you know, and I, at that point I had had friends who called and were like, dude, we're drinking, come to this bar. And all, I was that guy who was always like, nah, I'm good. Like, I don't want to, it's 11 o'clock. I don't want to come now out to a bar where you guys are already way ahead of me, having a having a rough night, whatever. I'll catch you next time. But this one time, Grayson called and was just higher than I could imagine, barely functioning. But he was like, we have to do it. And my gut was like, do it. <laughs> And it's it's just like a beautiful memory. Nothing insane happened. No no one got hurt or anything. We just dropped Grayson off at home and then went on home. And uh, yeah, I would never have experienced Terry's Turf Club. And I can't believe you haven't, Mark. It's yeah. it's apparently like a legendary thing in Cincinnati that I had never heard of until that night. I've never heard of it. They actually um, almost got shut down. Or they almost shut down a few years ago and like a new owner stepped in and bought the place. So it's actually under new ownership now. But yeah, it's one of like the things to do in cincinnati is go to terry's turf club huh i've never been there ever it's very cool Hmm. you have to wait quite a bit if you go at any point where it's busy but it's very cool and absolutely worth it it seems to now be just called the turf club yeah because terry is no longer in the picture terry doesn't own it Uh, i see (laughs) there's something maybe uh (laughs) happened to terry Uh, (laughs) terry uh terry don't work here no more he don't work at all for robbing my liquor store (laughs) (laughs) that's why we call him no hands terry now yeah (laughs) 
Oh no, I ain't uh, Terry. I'm Tony. Yeah, this is Tony's turf club now. Perry's turf club. Yeah, Perry is over there. I don't know what the fuck. Anyway, that that is good. I love that you trusted your gut on that night because it's so easy just to stay at home and be like, I don't wanna. I don't feel like it. I get there. You. I mean, your friend calls you high on shrooms. Maybe that's really a coin toss of whether that's gonna go. So you just gotta go with your gut on it. Yeah. No, I fully expect that to be like we get in and he's like let's get some wendy's or something and then we just get wendy's and go and it's like all right man give you a ride home that's cool yeah and which you know i have done that where a friend called and they were like i'm too drunk we're like i'm at this place i don't know where i am and it's like yeah well I'll, I'll help you you know yeah i have a car and i'm i'm sober so i can drive so i'll come and i'll give you lift whatever but that night it's it's like a shimmering memory for me and you guys know i'm notorious for having an awful memory and forgetting things that i myself said in the not too distant past uh but that happened literally over a decade ago and i still remember i remember what the food what the foie gras looked like it came in this little paper tub served on like a bed of like ruffly lettuce mm -hmm. and it came with this sauce and like i can remember the whole scene really vividly it was just this crazy awesome night all thanks to my gut that's nice i will award you some points thank you you're welcome this episode is brought to you by adobe acrobat running a business means paperwork and lots of it between contracts invoices and everything else you need to keep things running smoothly well, it never ends. Luckily, Acrobat makes it simple to track and manage your documents. If you need to edit, get e-signatures, and secure PDFs all in one app, Acrobat's got it. Get started at adobe.com. I would like to actually lead off with a different... I came up with a different story. Okay, I'm fine with that. So I've got the, I've got the other one still to tell, but this one I feel like is just more interesting. I'm down. And I've got a couple working titles for it. The first uh, title would be Let Me In. The next title... <laughs> always so creepy <laughs> what, what happens then, well this story is kind of i don't know this next the next one is uh i don't like it the untrustworthy solicitor is the other work <laughs> i've got here <laughs> what, oh, what is this a victorian horror story <laughs> i mean kind of am i supposed to pick am i supposed to pick what title? no i just those are just the two i came up with i wanted to share both i like uh, both. i see i see i see i see so I want to preface with like nothing actually crazy ended up happening here, uh -huh. but this is definitely a moment where sometimes you, you see a person and like, there's just, you get that immediate gut reaction, right? That immediate, like instinctual judgment of like, I can trust this person. I can't trust this person. Yeah. Like you did with the, the clerk. So we get solicitors from time to time that go door to door, you know, sometimes they're selling stuff. Like it'll be a kid with Girl Scout cookies or popcorn or whatever. A lot of times it's these um, like bug uh, people that, you know, they want to come and like, oh, do you have ants? Do you have termites? Well, we can do this thing. And this, that was the case in this, this part. So this guy knocks on the door and I answer it and immediately like whenever I answer he's smiling but like there was something about his eyes that I just immediately did not trust him huh. at all. I was like I will not let this man in my house. I'm going to be like kind of like you said it was like I need to be I need to get this guy away as fast as possible. Don't engage in long conversation. Don't be too friendly. I need him to go away. Yeah. And immediately I found out that wasn't going to be the case. He was like, hey, uh, we're doing a house in the neighborhood and uh, we want to know if you have any insect problems. Do you have this, 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 or this? I was like, no. And actually we had some stuff done, which we did actually. We had stuff done like a couple months before. So uh, we're good. Thank you. And he's like, well, uh, what kind of stuff did you have done? And uh, uh, well, we had some, you know, small ants and we got rid of them. We're good. Oh, uh, do you know what stuff they used? No. Well, uh, do you mind if I come in and take a look at what they might have done? Like, no, you cannot come in and take a look. And he's like, well, I can walk around the property. Maybe they did some stuff. No, no, that's okay. And he's like, well, do you have the receipt? Let me look over the receipt. I can see what chemicals they use. Like, he just kept getting more and more personal where it's like, yeah, can I see what credit card you paid with? Like, it, it just got really uncomfortable. But, like, the most unsettling part was just, like, the serial killer expression on his face of, like, smiling. But his eyes were just, like, I don't know. There was something cold and not personable about the eyes when i was trying to talk to him it was like i tried to avoid looking at his face because it was so unsettling just something about the way he smiled it made me feel super uncomfortable and then on top of that the like let me come case your house <gasps> I don't know. And he just would not take no for an answer. So literally, like, he just wanted to get inside your house one way or another. Well, yeah, and I asked him, like, what I forget the name at this point. I wouldn't say it if I remembered, but, like, I asked him what, what company he was with. And he's like, oh, so-and-so. I was like, oh, I've not heard of them. Do you have, like, a card? 
No, I don't. <laughs> okay. So you have no documentation that you work for this company you claim to work for, and you really want to see a receipt with my personal information or come look inside my house uh -huh. where this person who sprayed was not. They did not come inside. Oh. They just did stuff outside. You work for that co It's weird. You're, you don't have, like, a uniform? You guys don't have, like, a comp with a thing? I'm like, oh, it's at the cleaners. <laughs> I got uh, stuff on it. <clears throat> well, he, he had a shirt with, like, a logo on it. But, like, you can just go make a shirt. Like, you can literally just do that. But I don't know. I Just the immediate gut reaction of, like, I looked him in the eye and it was like, get this man away from your house. And then him proceeding to, like, try everything he could to get inside was just super uncomfortable. And I'm a very charismatic person. I can handle conversations pretty well. Good ones, bad ones uncomfortable ones whatever i can what handle was it. he selling he like wanted to do like insect stuff, repellent right? basically yeah like pesticides he wanted to like make sure that we didn't get ants or ladybugs or stink bugs or whatever so he wanted to take a look at the house and you know drill some holes in the foundation to put in their anti bug <laughs> shit and uh i told him we just had stuff done and he was like mm, did you prove it and it's like <laughs> i don't have to do that i'm telling you no leave oh man and then like can i come inside like, who's, why? What in the world do you need to come inside my house for? But I don't know. I just, that interaction has stuck with me because you guys cannot see the face. But just imagine, like, watching a movie and see, seeing, like, a Hannibal Lecter type face where it's, like, he's smiling, but, like, you just feel super unsettled by it. That that was the exact feeling. And the dude wasn't a, a big guy. He was probably average height, uh, short, black hair. But there was just something in his eyes that were like if i let this man in my house he's going to kill me was like my gut was telling me that yeah at best he's gonna get in your house and then bust out his jar of termites and sprinkle it on your carpet and be like oh look <laughs> yeah. at this oh my goodness you need me <laughs> or he's going to kill you <laughs> like it's one or the other really hit or miss it felt like he wanted to case the house to see if it was worth robbing us or something but like mm -hmm. he was probably legitimately just a bug dude that didn't have the best salesmanship mm -hmm. but there was some Something about his face that said, I don't know, I could not trust him at all. Yeah, I get that. That's that makes sense. I think I I would guess to just guessing because that's like my my go to thing for shutting down people who come to the door because we get that a lot for like solar power. Yeah. Landscaping when the window companies around us are really aggressive. We get all these random things, which, by the way, I've never dear companies. Never, ever am I sitting in my house like, oh, we need windows. I wish I didn't have to leave home in order to get them. I'll just wait until some guy comes to my door and I'll buy windows from him. <laughs> no, no one thinks like that. Like, how how successful could that be? But I, whenever anyone comes, no matter what it is, like window guys, I'm like, we just got new windows. And they're like, ah, shucks. And like, you know, the Jehovah's Witness come and I'm like, I already found God. And they're like, oh, okay. I just love it. Like, hey, you couldn't tell I got new windows. Fuck. Jehovah's Witness. I already found God. Oh, fuck! How could I not? Oh, I'm just fucking stupid. <laughs> God, that would be so good. I already found God. God damn it! Another oh, one. Fuck! I mean, have a blessed day. I'm sure. I'm sure those guys are used to that, where everyone is just like, I already got the thing, and they're like, Oh yeah, did you? Just like all the other neighbors on this block. I don't believe you. <laughs> Prove it. But also, that's weird. I just also love the image of like more two Mormon guys in the shirts and the ties on your doorstep with the bikes. And they're like, we just want to talk to you about, uh, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ. And you're like, I already thought I died and went to heaven. I figured it out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Fuck. Just throw their bikes down. Like, damn it. The last time we recorded the podcast, I don't think I told you guys this, uh, but I I had two guys from a local church show up, and they were like giving me a pamphlet and telling me about like Jesus or Christ our Lord and all that stuff. And they're like, you should come to our church. And I was like, guys, I really got to go. I can't talk about this. I got to go to work because I was getting ready to come down here and record. <laughs> but being as we, were, I don't think we were doing a stream that day, so I was wearing like obviously pajamas, like a fucking stained shirt. <laughs> I had my shorts on, my glasses on. I looked disheveled as hell. And I'm like, yeah, I got to guys. I got to go to work. I got to be there in like two minutes and they just look like have a good day at work sir i was like they don't believe me at all they think i'm lying to them but i really do i gotta go work right now and that that also stuck with me because i felt guilty that they thought i was lying to them when i in fact was not but i realized the moment i closed the door <laughs> oh, guilty well i love that i love the idea that any interaction a door-to-door -door salesperson has with me i'm not trying to be mean to them <laughs> but i will love for them to leave feeling really confused <laughs> one of my favorite like one of the funniest 
funniest things I've ever seen on Unis Honest. Yeah. When you guys did the sex toys breakfast video and Mark is trying to choke down some scrambled eggs with like a gag thing on his mouth that he's just like and then Mark's eyes as he like makes eye oh, contact yeah. with the guy outside walking up to the door. That's so because you know and, and you said in the video I think you went and answered it and it was like a delivery or something and the guy was just like help oh, here you go. Yep. All right. Have a good one. Yep. I just left. No, that's didn't fucking say anything. The hundred percent real. So that actually happened. Literally, as I'm, you know, I like want to know what his gut said about you. He <laughs> <laughs> said, "Just deliver the package. Get out of there. You don't need a signature this time. You don't need." It. Boy, do I have a story to tell when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> don't engage. Don't engage. <laughs> If they invite you inside, you say no. I'm real busy. I got a meeting to get to. Never again. Hey, your mail truck might have some problems. Oh, thank you. I'm good. Uh, sure, you don't mean me to come in there and look at the for bugs? No, 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 no. You did start off this by saying an HVAC person came Can in I and assured you that there was no, <laughs> no one, no one spying on you. So there's some some relation here. Yeah, that super uncomfortable words. <laughs> I love the idea of just confusing the shit out of those people, though. It's glorious. You said you had another story. Though. Though, Wade. I've got I've got a couple. Yeah. Uh if we're doing titles again, I guess this one would be called um I'd give an arm and a leg to be there. Alright. Um do you wanna do you wanna do <laughs> okay. one, Bob, or just me going? Yeah, Bob, do you have I don't know if I really have another one. Okay, I can just go for now and you can think on it. I had an idea, but then I got really wrapped up in your story and I kind of forgot it. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is similar to your first story where this isn't like a direct judgment on like a, a gut feeling about a person. This is just a gut feeling in general. Uh, I had a friend who was throwing like a I'm going away to college party. Um, he was moving away to go to a college kind of far away. and we, we wouldn't see each other for a while. And I was working late night at this ice cream place. I think everyone knows I worked at United Dairy Farmers by now. So it doesn't really matter. United Dairy Farmers, which like uh, gas station, ice cream, convenience store, whatever, all wrapped into one. And I had to work late. So I got off. I think I got off at like 10 o'clock this particular night drove over his goodbye party had already started people were already there and i showed up and there were a lot of people there i didn't recognize uh, which was kind of confusing i was like huh because we were pretty good friends so i thought we had like a lot of the same friend group and i was like okay well i know who will be there at least and i showed up and a lot of people i did know were there and a lot of people i didn't know were there but one of the concerning things was that as the night went on i learned more and more about the things that were going on here that i didn't want to be a part of so for instance there were some people there that i don't think were old enough to drink that were definitely drinking um there was another person dropping their pants hitting on my friend's mom oh which was weird i'm sorry what yep yep and uh i was thinking my brain is like you need to leave you need to leave you need to leave but my gut said you need to stay if shit goes sideways someone that's not fucked up needs to be here to be responsible and to help you need to stay just suck it up deal with it if worse comes to worse the right thing is to stay and my brain is like god no it's not i'm not going to jail for all this crazy shit happening i don't want to be a part of this uh and then as the night goes on i found out that there was a man in my friend's bedroom giving tattoos what um what? giving yep he was just you know you got really high really drunk really whatever and you wanted a tattoo just go into the bedroom get it done and there was something going on in the garage i didn't know what was going on in the garage didn't want to know so i just hung out chatted with people didn't drink didn't do anything i was a pretty i was a goody goody um but i just you know hanging out everyone else was having a great time and i was just there kind of watching over making sure that hopefully things didn't get worse than they already were a couple of my friends snuck out at one point and they're like you know what we're gonna go break into the neighborhood pool and we're gonna go skinny dipping and i was like mm, sounds like a terrible idea but i guess it's better than being here with the tattoos and the underage stuff that's happening so i have fun with that um uh -huh. a little bit later we get uh i think it was a text I, I don't think they came back i think it was a text hey need you to clear out the house everything's bad uh ambulance on the way oh what well, it turns out that uh, in order to break into this pool, you had to climb a fence. And uh, it was getting late at this point. There was dew on the grass. My friend, um, I'm not going to say her name. She was wearing like flip flops and she realized climbing this fence and flip flops wasn't going to work. So she kicked them off and tried to do this barefoot. The top of this fence um, had, uh, we'll, we'll just call them what they are, spikes, basically. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. And as she was climbing with uh, feet that had stepped in dewy grass over this fence while pretty heavily intoxicated, she slipped at the top uh -huh. and impaled her thigh on this fence. Ah! Oh! And she was stuck dangling just by her thigh on the fence. Oh, oh God! Ah! Oh! Oh, God. So, um, Jeez. luckily with her was my friend's mom, who I guess had also intended on going skinny dipping with them, oh. um, or at least watching over them. But she was a nurse and she was able to determine like that you know, an artery what? wasn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's a nurse. So nurse, nurse, nurse mom, mom was there upstairs at the party with the, with the drinking and the tattoos. Her kids come up and are like, we're going to skinny up in the pool. And she's like, Oh, that sounds fun. I'll drive you. <laughs> What? Yeah, well, she was there, and uh, she was like, okay, well, you didn't hit an artery. We got to get you to a hospital. They're going to have to get you off this fence. Ah. So she and other drunk friend um, lifted her off of the fence, which, as you can imagine, was not a pleasant, fun experience. Um, I offered to come help. They said they would let us know. They thought they could get her off the fence and get her to the hospital, but we had to clear out the house. So um, uh, we started clearing out the house. I don't know if I want to say who else was there. What? I, I, you didn't say, and you don't have to, but who texted you? Because did this mom text you and be like, hey, Wade, it's Mrs. No, no. Jorgensen. She contacted her son. Can you clear out the party? She contacted her son. He immediately left to go. Like He didn't say a word. He just left to go help. None of us knew what was happening until he got up there. Uh, and then he texted and asked us to clear the house. So Yikes. Uh, yike. Yeah. Also, you remember I told you guys I have that thing about leg injuries and they yeah. make me deeply uncomfortable. I did not remember that. I do remember. It turns out the thigh, the thigh impalement. <laughs> Sorry. Close enough. Really doing oh, it to bad. me. Having heart palpitations over here. That's horrific. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not remember that. God. Uh, we're getting older, you know? Uh, sometimes I forget. Yeah. We should do an episode about that. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a great topic. <laughs> Sorry, continue, continue. So I have to go into the bedroom and be like, hey, tattoo guy, you're doing great work. Get out. Oh, great <laughs> tattoos. Um, hey, all you crazy kids that are definitely too young to be here doing what you're doing, uh, leave. And you, yeah, there were some like um people that were like, uh, no, I'm not leaving. I'm having a good time. And I was like, mm, tell that to the police when they get here, which was a bluff. But they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, uh, so and so got hurt. Uh, ambulance uh, came to get them. Police are on the way to see what the hell's going on. Yeah. I would get out of here if i were you and that got them moving and then i went to the garage and i was like i don't know what's going on in the garage but i've got to clear it out too i opened the door and it is just smoke it's just smoke just smoke i can't see a damn thing and it's just like the stereotypical like you know hot boxing car thing where you can't see in the car because there's so much smoke that was this garage there was so much pot being smoked that the whole garage was just a cloud and i'm like Hey, you guys got to leave. Police are on their way. And then like all of a sudden I'm just looking into a chest. Like what? A chest? Like a, a chest. Like a box chest? No, like a man's chest. <laughs> like a man who towered over me and I was 6 foot 3, 6 foot 4 at the time, uh... fully grown, and this man, I was nipple height. My eyes were nipple height. <laughs> And I looked up at this guy, this big, buff, scary, giant man, and I was like, you have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I was like, uh, so-and-so got hurt. Police are on their way. He's like, oh, thanks, buddy. All right. And he was really nice, like patted me on the shoulder and just booked it. Oh, thanks, pal. I have no idea who this giant man was, but he was just the owner of that garage. And I'm glad that he was friendly after he realized that I was giving him a fair warning. I'm just, I'm so confused as this was all at your house house right no 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 this is my friend's, friend's house. House. Friend's my house. house oh okay but your mom was there not my mom whose mom my friends ha whose house it was it was his parents house and his mom was there and his mom was a nurse they were hosting the party obviously she was supervising i guess so it's one of those cool parents jeez <laughs> yeah i guess i mean they were this was a shock to everyone involved because normally i mean he was an only child sure and he was a little spoiled but like they weren't that loose with him generally like normally they were pretty buttoned with like you know they'll let him get away with so much but this party was something else this was something nobody i don't think expected this to get to where it got um i don't know how it escalated to that point but she was just sitting around chatting like having a couple drinks and i you know i don't know one friend just kept hitting on her which was awkward as hell uh there was the underage thing the tattoo 
news, the pot garage, the uh, earmuffs Bob, the friend hanging off of a fence. There was just all kinds of crazy stuff happening. <laughs> that was not enough warning. <laughs> what do you mean? That was plain warning. I don't think you gave him nearly enough time. Uh, you can listen now, Bob. <laughs> the leg, hang on, Bob. Impalement. <laughs> <laughs> so we clear out the house and we're like, okay, well, let's get to the hospital. Let's go see if our friend's okay. So we, we go to leave and... Um, I don't know if you want to listen to this detail, Bob. I don't know. Just count to like 10, I guess, if you don't want to hear this. Well, I have to driving, listen. Well, driving out, we had to pass the, the pool, and we drove kind of slowly by it, and we could literally see the spoke that bent Ooh. for being stuck on it. Ugh. And, um... Well, not all of her made it to the hospital because there was definitely oh. some stuff on the spike. It was awful. Oh, it was an awful scene. <laughs> oh, man. God. Yeah. God. So we drove to the hospital. We got there. We had to wait a long time. And uh, I asked the question. I was like, well, what are we going to do about the bent spoke at the pool? And they're like, oh, don't worry. So-and-so is on it. He's got a hose, and he's going to try to bend it back. And I was like, excuse me? Um, somehow someone got a hose up there and tried to clean it up a bit. They could not bend it back, and I think it is still bent to this day. <laughs> <laughs> The last time I was there, which has been a few years, because we moved away a while ago, but, uh, yeah, she ended up being okay, um, has a pretty nasty scar, uh, but while we were there, I, I made the joke that she was the only one that was willing to give an arm and a leg to be at the party, and then she laughed and then started crying because it hurt so bad to laugh, uh -huh. and that always stuck with me, but, um, hmm. yeah, I stayed, I trusted my gut and stayed, and, um, all hell broke loose, and I was one of the few responsible ones there to help handle things, but, uh, my brain knew, my brain knew that everything was wrong, and, uh, it sure as fuck was. All right. You guys ever have a party like that you've been to where uh, you show up and everything possible illegal is going on and you're like, man, <laughs> I need to leave immediately, but your gut's like, no, you don't. Because normally it's the opposite, right? No, that whole story was just a series of, of gut decisions. And I don't know what decisions you really made there. Like, do you think that your presence at that party averted disaster? I had to leave out some details because they're like, they either give away like location or people specifically. But yeah, there were definitely moments where I steered people away from doing dumb stuff, such as the tattoos. Uh, there were definitely a few people that were like, fuck it, you know what? I'm going to go get this right now. And it's like, you don't want to do that right now with a random man in a bedroom. What you party had this? How? Yeah, this is like the party from a Zac Efron as a teenager movie. Like, this is the kind of thing that happens where I see it on TV or in a movie and I'm like, that never happens in real life. Yeah, I've had a few moments, and especially in my high school career, I had a few moments uh, between then and early college days where stuff that's not supposed to be real sure as hell ended up being real um i think i've told you i lived through a drug bust where i woke up to a, a policeman with a flashlight in my face telling me to get downstairs while they searched our house for drugs because of a lovely family member of mine who i love dearly who was always very kind to us and definitely didn't plant drugs in our house hmm. um just you know i've been through some things that I, I think the average person probably hasn't and this party was definitely one where it was like let's go say goodbye to our friend and it ended up in the er with just so many questions and then I had to explain to my ex at the time why I was like so late getting home. It's like, I uh, went to say goodbye to so-and-so and so-and-so and -so, uh, so -and -so, uh, ended up on a fence. So I uh, had to go to the hospital. I'll be home later. Hmm. Yeah. That is quite a story. Yeah. I will give you many points. Wow. After I, man, I, after we'll talk more about it. Remind me after we're done. I, like I said, I don't want to call it specific people, but like it was interesting. There was, there was a couple of the responsible people there too. It wasn't just me. There was at least two other people, but one of them left early and my God, am I glad I wasn't alone, but it, Trying to clear out a bunch of people that are either high, drunk, both, or, you know, who knows what. People you don't know that are in a house like this is terrifying. Because I'm just expecting to get, like, stabbed or shot or both. Like, leave the house. No. <laughs> and, uh, that, that fear was on my mind. But everyone's okay somehow, despite that and other stories that I haven't told and may not ever tell. <laughs> that, yeah, no, that is, I sometimes forget just like the kind of shit that went on in your high school experience versus mine. Like my, <laughs> I just had a very different experience altogether. Yeah. Like I had so many friends that were raised by like strict parents that like as high school went on, they just went wild and I felt responsible for them. Like I needed to be there, like to be the, I always called myself Chucky from Rugrats. I was always the one that's like, hmm, that's not such a good idea. You don't want to do 
that and then they would inevitably not listen and then i'd have to be there to help clean up the mess and it was really miserable a lot of times being that person but like i felt like if i wasn't there to help i would feel immensely guilty knowing i could have been there to help stop something or to help them get like to a doctor or you know whatever else mm. so i stayed with it and stuck with it despite being very miserable a lot of the time because i wanted nothing to do with the shit that they got into yeah i feel that i feel that all right well sorry for taking so much time on that story but it was uh that's one i think i've held for a while no 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 it's good it's that's, good it's that's good crazy thing. Yeah. yeah that is a little crazy that's a crazy party that's pretty all right sure was and it got worse as the night went on much worse <laughs> much worse no nah, or much better better for the story awful for the moment of being there i don't know do you ever center yourself if you're in an uncomfortable situation you just look around and you're like you look to your left it's like oh god you look straight ahead it's like oh man you look to your right it's like oh fuck and then you know something <laughs> weird's in the gr like everywhere i looked there was something else going on there was tattoos to the left there was my friend's ass trying to hit on my other friend's mom outside there was the what to me were kids doing stupid shit like uh, to the right and then i knew behind me in the garage there was something going on and they didn't know what like and then the the fence thing happened it's just like surrounded by awful and it's like at any given moment you're like feeling like you're in the middle of a powder keg about to explode not gen no no not really i found myself not in that extreme of a situation but in situations like that so many more times than i wish i had growing up it is unusual i would say it's more yeah. movie high school experience-esque than you know yeah. you might think not a good movie well and i'm curious i guess too i would love to hear responses in the subreddit does that happen i feel like to me and my life experience that seems like the not common version of what happens in high school but is that what kids do did i have a lame high school experience where we just played video games and and drank Mountain Dew and like didn't get impaled on fences or to get tattoos in my friend's mom's bedroom or whatever. My friend group was also very heavily influenced. We grew up in like the original Jackass movies days. Oh yeah. So my friends did a lot of things like recording like let's do Jackass things. Like one of them volunteered to be hit by a car at one point. We did that too. We like pulled each other on roller skates behind cars and hit each other in the ass with wiffle ball bats but nothing permanently life ending or altering quite so much as it sounds like some of the people were into in that. Oh. Oh, then you didn't live. No, no. I guess not. 20 bucks, my friend, let you shoot him with a BB gun. One of them volunteered to literally be run over by his own car. That's not good. Uh, at like 20 miles an hour. That oh. seems like an obviously bad decision. At the last moment, he realized he didn't think he would fit under it, so he jumped and then like shattered his own windshield with his body to not go under oh, oh sick yeah we we had a crew i was not there for those moments thankfully those were moments i was not i would not have let that happen if i was there i would have been like dude i don't care i will call the police on you if you guys try to run over this person i'm not gonna let you murder them huh. i did have a line i let a lot of dumb shit happen because they were my friends and i knew that if i wasn't they would just do it without me there so it's like okay well i can stop them this time or this time i can at least talk them down a little bit but there were times i had to cave in and let them do dumb shit or else i knew they would just do it behind my back and i wouldn't be there to help when things inevitably went wrong. It was an uncomfortable part of the friendship to be in, for sure. Mm. But, um... Do you, do you feel like you got enough out of the friendship to make it all worth it? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> It was more so like we were friends for a long time. A lot of us were friends for a long time. And then they, I, I saw like the rebelness in them start to go. And it's like I couldn't rein it in. So they just had to they had to experience it, I guess. And luckily nobody died, which is shocking, really. That does sound shocking. I have a heartwarming trusting your gut story. All right. Good. I don't have any of those. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm going to call this one. I knew it. Nice. Yeah. Wait, even better. Uh, At first sight. Oh. All right. What about, I knew it at first sight. Nah, that's not good. Okay. All right. Oh, right uh, wait. Even better. Huh? At first sight, I knew it. Oh, I Damn love it. it. That's the one. That's the one. All right. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. Uh, this one's not super long, but I tend to be a very uh, gut listening type person when it comes to decisions. Uh, yeah. Places that like Mandy and I have lived. Every every place we've lived, when we walked in to like see the apartment or see the house or whatever, we walked in and within I don't know within the first couple minutes of looking around and like getting a sense of the place, it's somewhere inside of me i was uh for all the places we've lived i was like yeah this is this is the one and it's not like i was i just dictated that and i was like well, this is it we're done we're not looking and in every case we looked like one of the first places we looked at my my gut was like this will be the place uh -huh. this is the right place and then we would look at like half a dozen other apartments or whatever trying to find the right place at the right price and we've only lived in a few places together so far but i have been correct every time and so i tend to listen to my gut for decisions like that and uh in 
I guess it was in like 2009. And in college again, I was living in this house with some buddies and we decided to have a Halloween party. And we decided to just like invite the whole, everybody we knew in the music school. We were like, come over, bring whoever, you know, big Halloween party at our house. We're going to have music and, and whatever. It should be fun. And it was a cool house. It was a cool house with like a, there was a kitchen area and then there was like an upstairs area that overlooked the kitchen. And there was also like an outside balcony. It was like a good hanging out house. It was a fun house. And at this party, a lot of people showed up and one particular person showed up. This girl showed up who I had not met before, who was in the music school. And we just happened to have matching costumes. I was dressed as like a 1920s gangster because I had a custom made fedora because of course I did. And I wore a suit and I was a gangster and this girl showed up and she was dressed as a flapper, which is like, you know, dressed in sort of 20s era, like a feather boa and just, you know, yeah, flapper. Of course. We matched, basically. We're from the same general time. And I remember, I didn't know this person. I never talked to her. She walked in and I was like, oh, her costumes match. Oh, wow. And just sort of like thought and looked for a minute and like said hi. And then she just went around hanging out party with other friends and i remember that night i told my friends i was like i really want to kiss that girl Mm -hmm. which is a weird thing for me if you know me personally you know i'm super timid in terms of like dating people i didn't really date a lot of people but this girl showed up at this party and i just had this gut feeling of like i really i just feel like i need to like i want to get to know this girl and i did i like i hung around all night and tried to like weasel into you know weasel into the circle she was in to have conversations and was trying to be flirty and i didn't end up kissing her that night but i just had that feeling of like i gotta like i gotta date her or something mm. i don't know and it turned out that she i don't know if she was single at that party i think she still had like a high school uh, boyfriend she was she was a freshman and it was pretty early in the school year and then she ended up dating someone else uh, but it turns out that girl was mandy mm. and a couple years or almost a year i don't know it was almost a year after our, that initial night where i met her and was like immediately infatuated uh we started dating and yes i was hoping you would yeah yeah well, spoilers, I guess, but we're married now. What? Congratulations. So it kind of worked out. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. One of you was there. I guess it wasn't Wade. All right. Well, that's true. But my gut was right. Turns out I did want to kiss Mandy and also marry her. So that was a good one. That's a good one. And with that, we bring this to a close. So let me tally up the final points. That was a good gut. I mean, that's like a pretty good gut instinct to follow. That's about as good as it can get. So I'll give you some good points for that. And nailed it, right? Yeah, you really did nail it. You nailed it good. So with that being said, I'm looking at the scoreboard. Uh, Is there any last minute, you know, sweetenings of the deal that anyone wants to squeak into the judgment round? uh, Doors closing. Uh, I think you should trust your gut. You remember the story I told about ruining that gas station bathroom with the world's worst episode of diarrhea? Uh I had a gut feeling when I cooked the dinner that caused that. I was like, ooh, this meat's kind of funky. It'll be fine if I cook it. Should have trusted my gut. Trust your gut, people. All right, that's good. Consequences can be dire. I like that. Wade? My gut says to say no. I've got nothing else to add. All right. It's a coin flip whether that works out or not. And according to my points, Wade, you have 10 points. Uh Oh. Oh, yeah. Bob, you have 12. <gasps> Wait. And with How many that, did I get for that last thing? Uh, I actually didn't award any oh. for either of them. Well, I won anyway. My gut was right. My gut knew it was a waste of time. Yep, yep. Yeah. It was a waste of time, but congratulations, Bob. You have won. Wow. Yeah. Feels good. Yep. And with I it, forgot what it was like to win. I know, and that means that this week you won the $100 grand prize along with the judging of the next round. Wait, there's money prizes? Yeah. Is that like a, like a gift card or something? Or? No, I'm going to Venmo you $100 right now. Oh. I'm going to do this. Wait. I'm doing it. Venmo. This comes with a money prize? Yep. What second place get? Nothing. Okay, well, one of us just had to pay 15000 for an HVAC, but I guess Bob deserves $100. That's fine. <laughs> hey, I had to buy a new HVAC system at the last place we lived, like, seven years ago. So I'm still... that's That was expensive. Yeah. Do you want to compare home bills, Bob? Do you really want to do this? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I do. I know you got, like, a fridge, but... uh, <laughs> I do, because it would make me feel better. Yeah. Well, it feels good to win, you know? You guys really rigged the game last week. I was pretty sure I should have won last week since I was the only one actually competing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I, there was literally no chance I was going to win, apparently. So that seemed pretty unfair. So this feels like justice, which I love. All right, good. Good justice. Uh, so congratulations. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wade, I will provide you an opportunity for a loser speech. 
five. Uh, four, I feel like I've given too many of these loser three, speeches, and uh, two, well, I don't know what to say, so one. I got nothing. So thank you for your time. All right, thank you everybody so much for listening. You can check us out every Monday, and if you join us on the YouTube channel, occasionally we will do live streams where we talk about even more topics that are ridiculous in the world out there. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, check out Bob at MyScrim and and uh, wait at Lord Minion seven 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 or Minion seven 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 on Twitch. Thank you. And um, I suppose that's all we got for tonight. So, podcast out.